At listenuptv.com, we take faith conversations deeper. Check out our blogs, send us your questions, and let us know what you think. That's listenuptv.com. Listen Up is back looking at climate change and its epicenter, the Canadian Arctic. We're recently back from Coral Harbour, Nunavut, where we saw firsthand the danger a thinning ice cap poses to the lives of families who travel the ice daily hunting for food. They were celebrating a miracle rescue when Listen Up caught up with them. Joining us now to discuss the dangers climate change poses to the Inuit, Nunavut's Premier, the Honourable Eva Ariak, joins us from Iqaluit. Premier Ariak, welcome to Listen Up. Thank you. Is this what it's come down to? Miracle rescues, like we were part of uh, watching Celebrate earlier in the program. Are your people praying for a miracle from climate change? I think they are praying for a lot of things. Um, we are experiencing drastic changes in the weather pattern, on, um, on the permafrost and many other things with uh, plantation uh, uh, that are being affected as well, uh, as well as uh, wildlife species. For example, we have found insects and birds that have uh, never been uh, ventured uh, this far north and uh, people are surprised to see those kind of species. So, uh, and more and more I hear the hunters especially uh, complaining the fact that uh, the ice is too thin in some areas that it becomes dangerous to travel farther than they wish to go. And over the last few years uh, we have uh, experienced a number of accidents uh, that have taken place due to the condition of, of the ice that they are not used to traveling on. This uh, climate change is a human rights issue. It's a human rights issue for Northerners, so in that perspective you can, uh, you can understand it in, in that way as well. Uh, because um, there are a lot of effects that are being felt with, with the climate change. We in the North are the first people to feel it to feel the effects. And the, the people in the north, as well as, of course, the animals and, and uh, the plants and everything else. We are the, the very first people that are experiencing these kinds of uh, changes that are happening. And give us an idea how that affects your people economically. We already covered off on how their cost of living is at least five times higher than that of ours in the south. But how are they economically being affected when the ice is thinning, when the hunting patterns are changing? You know, we are still very much dependent upon wildlife uh, to supplement our food, to supplement our store-bought food. And when people, uh, especially the hunters, are leery about ice conditions, about conditions of hunting and so on, it does have a dramatic effect on what can happen and what is happening today in acquiring uh, the, the daily source of food that is so essential uh, with, within, within our community members. And what type, of, what type of changes do they make to adjust to that financially, lifestyle-wise? How do they cope? You know, yes, when, uh, within our government, uh, we emit very little greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, but we are concentrating more on adaptation to the climate change. Uh, we need assistance in infrastructure to address those kind of things. You know, uh, we are just, uh, for instance, last, uh, last year uh, we had uh, uh, an incident that happened in one of the communities where the bridge uh, collapsed due to melting permafrost and there had to be some emergency measures carried out. And that is not an isolated incident. There are similar incidences that are happening. Let's talk about what we can do uh, as consumers and as government on how to help cut down on the greenhouse gas. So when I, first as a consumer, do things like leave my, my mobile phones out of the charger, don't let the car idle, turn off the computers, the light switches, am I really uh, making a difference on the climate change issues? You know, if every little uh, initiative to cut down on the pollutants in our area is essential. Uh, it, 
is even more essential that other countries that are emitting dangerous uh, greenhouse gas emissions that affect us uh, take steps to address uh, our problems in, in the circumpolar area and in, uh, in the Arctic. Uh, we are committed to finding alternative ways to, uh, uh, to fossil fuels that we are so much dependent on because uh, we don't have a choice at this point. Uh, we are committed to finding out uh, how we can um, look into such things as, uh, as uh, wind power and hydro energy and all those kind of things and our endless sunshine that we get over the summer months. You know, all these sources are very good alternatives that we have to be looking into and um, in doing that though, we also need assistance in terms of um, dollars to, to be engaged in, in studies like that. Well, Premier Ariak, thank you for reminding us what a vital part of Canadian life your territory is. And uh, Nunavut Premier Eva Ariak, thank you very much for joining us from Iqaluit today. Thank you. Coming up, how those in the Arctic keep their connection to spirituality alive for survival. That's next.